Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Kate from What Kate Made, and today's demo is fabulous fabric flowers. Um, so these are something I have a lot of. They are great little things to put um, use in the summer, well, summer or winter. Um, they're great on as a brooch, so you could just wear it like that, or you can attach them to a handbag, um, a summer hat, your favourite scarf, virtually anything. So I'm going to just show you a couple of, of things that I've made, and then I've got four to demonstrate to you. Um, so there are all sorts of ways, all sorts of sizes. Um, as you know, I like to use scrappy fabrics as well. So um, these are bits and pieces of lace. That is a little reclaimed pearl button. This one's got sort of little strands like a rosette. Um, They've all got a little brooch back, um, which you can get from any sort of jewellery suppliers. You can get them cheap enough off the internet. Or you could just use a safety pin. Um, so that is the lace rosette one. I've got a couple here that are crocheted flowers. As, as you know, crochet is my, my primary craft. And flowers are a great way to use up all those little odds and ends of yarn you have left. This one has one of the painted buttons that I use. Again, I got them by the 100 from eBay mix set. There's another one there. You can see that's slightly different. But those are crochet flowers. We won't be doing any of them today because they just take a little bit more time. Uh, so the ones we're going to be doing today, first one is a simple rosette. This is made from a strip of denim fabric reclaimed from small jeans. And in the centre, there is a fancy silver button, again, reclaimed off an old jacket. Um, so that is a fairly simple gathered one. So that's the first one we're going to be doing. The second one we're going to do is, again, a quite simple one. I don't know whether you've made these before. These are called fabric yo-yos. They're basically a circle of a fabric that you gather together. So I've got two yo-yos, and in the middle is a little butterfly charm. And again, on the back is the brooch back. So that's another one we're going to be doing today. Uh, the third one is this red one. Well, I'm not going to do it in red, but this one is made up simply of circles of fabric and into, into space, I don't know whether you can see that, with circles of like a, a voile, uh, organza fabric. So that's lovely. I always think this isn't actually a particularly good example, but you kind of fluff the, them apart like that and they look a little bit like a camellia. And that's one of my favourites, so we'll be making one of those as well. If we have time, we'll also be making one of these felt ones. This one is actually felt, it's two circles of felt and a flower. Um, the flower on this one is tweed, but we're going to use felt just because it's a bit easier. Again, brooch back and painted button. So I just want to have a quick word to, about fabrics. As I said, I love to reclaim fabrics. I will buy interesting things in the clothing in a charity shop or nothing in my house ever get thrown away clothing wise well nothing at all really um it's all cycled down until in the end it makes dusted so uh, a word about fabrics so for your yo-yos you need a nice quality cotton craft fabric something like this one this is a fat quarter so it's got quite a good it's got quite a good strength to it. it's not too thin so that's or oh, this this one is a furnishing fabric now that would be better for something like the like the denim one. That needs quite a bit more of a sturdy fabric because you want it to keep its shape. Um, I spoke to you before. I said before about tweed, and um, I use I've got a lot of um, upcycled tweed. These are from old tweed jackets. These fray um, quite a lot. So what I've what you can use, and with any of the other fabrics as well, if you want them stabilised, sometimes you want them to fray. It's a nice shabby sheet look, but this is an iron-on interface, and so it's glue on one side and not on the other. And that will stabilise the fabric. So I've just done a bit of the tweed with it. So you can see it looks like that on the back. That's great because you can draw around your shape, but it will stop it fraying at the edges. Um, and, of course, there's lots of nice glamorous fabrics. You can use this. This is a lovely lot of Dupion silk. Um, again, I reclaimed it. I bought um, dresses like dressy uppy dresses at Christmas. And that's where I got um, some of my um, netting and voile from as well. That's just a quick word about fabrics. Right, we're gonna get started. 
I'm going to, as usual, I'm going to try and turn the camera down so that you can see what my hands are doing. So you can see, <laughs> I'm going to try and do it without knocking you over. Just bear with me a second while we see what we can see. Right, so you can see my hands now. Okay, so as I said, we're going to start with the denim one. So what I've got here is a strip of old denim cut, cut from jeans. Um, it's about 16 inches long. And I'm going to cut a strip of it about two inches wide. I'm trying to avoid that bit where it's um, it's got a bit frayed. So I'm going to cut along the edge. I'm going to use my pinking shears because that will give, give us a nice zigzaggy edge on it. So you want, I'm just going to cut back to the edge and try and get it as straight as I can. It doesn't matter. None of this has to be precise. And it all requires sort of minimal sewing skills. If you can do a running stitch, you can make one of these. My pinking shears. I need a bit of sharpening, but I'm not really sure how to sharpen them. I've tried sandpaper and I've tried um, in the that. So just get to the end there. Don't throw it, don't throw your scraps away. I keep these to stuff toys with, particularly for dog toys, because I don't like the idea of my dog eating eating a lot of um this stuff. <laughs> right. I'm gonna cut the other end flat, so about two inches wide because that's the end you're going to gather, so it doesn't need to have fancy end on it. Again, just be roughly precise, as you can see. Mine's got a bit wobbly at one end, so I might just trim that back with the pinking sheets. It's just to get the shape back. Right. There we go. There's our strip of denim with one wavy edge. It's not very straight, but it doesn't matter. One zigzaggy edge and one plain edge. So, needle and thread. Um, I've just got needles already threaded, one with dark and one with light, because it doesn't really matter because the sewing isn't going to show. But what I just wanted to show you. So, I've threaded my needle with a, with a double strand. And at the very end of it, I'm going to not the two loose ends together. Now, this provides a little bit of extra strength and also an anchor point for when you start sewing. So let's just, I was hoping today that I'd be able to see your comments because I've set up another another device, but it has gone live. <laughs> it has gone live, but I can't seem to see anything. I don't really know what's going on. Okay, so there's your knot on the end. When you start sewing, I go up and down and pull it right through. And then just before you get to the knot, just separate the threads like that and pull your needle through and it anchors it like a slip knot. Now simply, about half a centimeter in, you just run a running stitch all the way along. And the running stitches up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, don't gather it too tight. You can pull it later and gather it, but we're just going to keep going all the way to the end. Now, there, are, there is another way of doing this where you make it narrower at one end so you're basically your um, strip of fabric is narrower at one end the other so that gives you more of a, a narrower effect more of a rosette effect but I suspect that this one's just going to be a single rosette right we'll see when we gather it so there we go we've got this gathered so what we're going to do I'll turn it back around this way so I can see what I'm doing Gather it a little bit more, just so it's loosely gathered all the way evenly along. And then it's difficult to gather sometimes. We are going to simply, <laughs> say simply, we're going to simply um, sew it together into a flower shape. So I'm just going to pull that a little bit tighter. This one's come out a bit bigger than the others. We could solve that by... Um, 
uh, just putting the gather thread higher up. Now what I've done there is gathered the two straight ends together and overlap them. And then you're going to come up with your needle and go through both ends to just anchor them. Can you see the overlaps like this? So doesn't really, I should have maybe pulled it a bit tighter at that end, but we can do that now. We can go back through the gathers because you need to make it quite secure. So you can go back through your gathers and pull them a little bit tighter. No, you can't. Um, I'm just going. What I'm going to do is fasten this end off and start again. It's just going to make it that little bit easier. There we go. So you can see as well. I've got a bit of fraying going on here. That's from the zigzag, but that gives you a kind of shabby sheet look, which is nice sometimes. So what I'm going to do is go back through these gathers to make them secure. Keep our flower shape. And then I'm going to attach the button. Now I have quite a collection of buttons because, as I say, I'm like a magpie. I collect things everywhere. So it doesn't matter what sort of button you have. Um, you might want to have one that matches whatever you're going to put your, your flower on. Mine's come out much bigger than, than the previous one. But So this is the button I'm going to use. Um, oh, can you see it? Where's the camera? It's a little um, plastic button, but it's got like a gold flower on it. It has um, a shank on the back. That just makes it a little bit easier to attach. So put your button on and then sew your button through. Again, through your gathers, all adding a little bit of extra security to it. This has come out quite a bit bigger than I expected. So as I said, you could either make it your band of fabric narrower or gather it a bit further up and then you would you would have more of a, a pucker in the middle. So, so that's that's the button in the middle. Now the last thing we're going to do is sew on the brooch back. So I'm going to take that through to the back. I'm still using the same piece of thread, so it's quite economical that way. Just cut that end up. Where's my brooch back? I've got everything ready and now I can't find them. There they are. So I've just got a few different ones in here, different sizes. There's um, silver ones, and I've got a couple of goldy coloured ones. Uh, some are slightly bigger, but let me show you how they work. They have two holes in the back, um, and that's what you saw. So undo it. Take your needle and go through one hole. And then we will sew again through the gathers and up through the hole two or three times on one side. And then I'll turn it over and we'll do two or three times up the other side as well. As I said, the brooch backs, you can buy them anywhere uh, on the internet. I would assume haberdasher shops. I do all my shopping on the internet, particularly since lockdown. I've ended up doing doing a lot. I'm not sure if anybody's watching. I can't see any comments at the moment, but I hope you are watching. If you are watching, drop me a comment. Uh, tell me where you are. What sort of day you've got there. We've got a lovely sunny day here. I've had to open the window so you may be able to hear the builder's traffic from the building site a couple of streets over. Right, so once you're finished, just anchor that off. Snip that thread. And there is your first brooch. As I say, I've got a little bit of fraying going on. So that's fine because that gives it a nice shabby sheet look, but I'll just clean my work with it. So there we go. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than that one. But that was a narrow piece of fabric and it, it but that is, how simple is that? That is very simple. So that's the gathered one. So we'll put that to one side. And we will move on to the uh, 
yo-yo one. There's a slight difference in the back of here in that I've put a bit of felt as a cover for the um, the back of the brooch, which just makes it a little bit neater. I'll do that with the one I'm doing now so that you'll be able to see that. Okay. Let's see, let me just, I don't think it will actually, the one I'm looking, I haven't got the right color. We can show you on another one. Now, this is what I've got for my yo-yo. There should have been a template with circles on it. Um, you need the largest template, that's a six and a half centimeter, six and a half inch diameter circle. I drew rounder the plate. Then your middle circle, that one's four and a half centimeters, uh, inches, sorry. So that's the difference, as you can see, the difference is now they look big circles, but that's because you gather them round back. So you actually sort of half the diameter of them for your brooch. That little circles for the brooch back. Now, I'm going to use this darling little um, butterfly charm. Again, charms I buy off eBay by the pack of 20. Um, quite reasonable. Uh, so you can, uh, you don't have to use a charm, you could use a button. Um, you could use a bead, you could use anything really. Uh, the two fabrics, now these are, these are nice. I haven't had these very long. These are Jules fabrics from... Jewels, the clothing manufacturer from Hobbycraft, and they're lovely. Um, I bought these. I, I do buy fabrics, not often, and I usually buy fat quarters because they're good quality cotton. So I have on the back already drawn my circle using my chalk pen. Um, you can don't have to use a chalk pen. Again, the um, that's not going to show on the finished item. So if you had to use a pencil or a biro, I'm sure you must have maybe like a five fabric marker somewhere. So just cut out your big circle. It's very boring watching me cut, I know, but I thought I'll just show you how it, how easy it is to cut them and how you don't have to be super accurate. And again, keep your fabric scraps for stuffing. I chose these two fabrics because I thought they were the contrasting ones, dark ones, like, but they do, they have come out the same bundle, so they are, um, they do match a bit, you know, they've all got the same colour scheme going on. So, which cuts on the I don't know whether you've made your yours before, but I learned how to make them at the WI craft event last year, and I'd seen them on, you know, on the in internet on Pinterest and things, but I'd never actually made them, and I was quite impressed with how easy they were. I'm gonna have to watch watch me thread a needle now, which I assure you can be incredibly painful because my eyesight's terrible. Um, in fact, just before we came on air, I had a delivery of large-eyed needles, but not fast enough for me to be able to use them now. Right. So again, I. I like to anchor mine by knotting the two ends together. That provides a good anchor for your gather stitch because the last thing you want is to pull your gather stitch and have it go all the way through and out again the other side. So again, um, let me have a think about this. I can't remember which side you gather on. You gather on the right side. So you take up the right side, right side up. Start again with your by anchoring your thread, just slipping it, your needle between the two strands where your knot is and pulling, and that gives you a nice anchor. Then again, about half a centimeter in, little, run a quick gather, gathering stitch. Just talk among yourselves now. Keep going. Now these little fabric yo-yos are great. You can use them. You, again, they're great for using up bits of fabric, but you can put them on everything. Last year I made bags, um, just used a canvas tote bag, like a calico one, just a plain one. And I set they, I set it out with, um, I drew, a, I embroidered a grid on it with, with coloured thread and then popped one of these little, these little yo-yos um, in the middle of each one with a button on. And it just looked really nice. They were presents. I think they went out as Christmas presents. So you keep going round, gathering. 
until you're all the way to the end and then you draw it all in to make um, your first jot. This is quite pretty, this. It's navy blue with these tiny little sprigs of flowers on. Might end up making a lot more things with this. Right, there we go. So then we pull it all in, gather it tight to make it like a, a pouch. And at this point, you can just pull, pull it into a circle because you've got your gathers, but you want you want to have it flat, a flat circle that's gathered. Keep drawing in your gathers. Just if you just flick your finger around the edge like that, that gives you that. So there you can see the yo-yo effect. So again, just go through your gathers a few times just to get secure them. You need a sharp needle for this. All of these, um, you can get cruel needles, which are sharp, and you can get embroidery needles, um, like a cross-stitch needle, which is blunt-ended, or a tapestry needle, and they're not as good because... You need to be able to, whoops, knew that was going to happen. Sorry about that, people. I think I need to get me. There we go. Oh, geez. That's always my nightmare, though, that will happen, and it has. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's our first yo-yo. So we'll just do a stitch through and then go through that loop just to give it a firm base and then put it on. I'm so sorry about dropping it like that. Now we're going to make the second yo yo. I think I should have done a here's, here's one I prepared earlier, probably, but time's running on. So, very quickly, I'm going to stitch through this one. I do want to be able to show you. I might, I might drop the felt flower off because I want to be able to show you the vile one because it's lovely. Um, it's my favourite. We'll see. We might have time to do the felt one as well. I don't want you to get bored. And as you can see, as I said before, it's minimal sewing. It's very simple. I've only threaded up black and white um, thread as well because they're either dark or the light and you can match your thread a bit more, but as I say, you're not going to see it. So, so that one, pull that tight. That was a bit quicker because it's smaller. And again, you want to just flatten it out by pulling at the sides till it flattens. Now that was, that was, as you know, a piece of check fabric like that, but Gathered up like that, it's, it looks really pretty. It's come out really well. I'm pleased with that. Just a few stitches through. To hold your gathers. And then next stage is to fasten them together. So you put that one on that one. That's pretty, isn't it? I like that. I like those colours together. And then... I'm going to go through the charm. Well, this has got a little jump ring on it. I'm not sure if I can get that off without my pliers. No, I can't. So I'm going to leave it on. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a little jump ring, but there's also this little bit to sew. So we'll sew through that. Put your charm on. Get everything centred with your charm. And then... So through all the layers together. Making sure that you, your charm is in the centre. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to hold, if you can see, the charm and the two yours yo and in the place where I want them and just sew through all the layers. pull it quite secure so all three bunch together it's actually gone slightly off kilter but you can always just adjust it a bit afterwards right 
And then the last thing you would do again is attach the brooch back. I'm not going to show you that again because I've already showed you that one. Oh, that's your finished flower. I think that's lovely. I love those colours. I'm definitely going to use that fabric again. Okay. And I will, the last thing I will do is just, I'll come back and put brooch backs on all of these when you've gone. And keep that one. And that's your second one. Chrissy, do you like that? I do. Right. So let's move on to this one, which is sort of like a camellia, I always think. Um, now, to make this, you need nine circles of your, I don't know if you can see that, your organza fabric, eight circles of your printed cotton fabric, and a backing circle. Now, this one is red felt, but on the one I'm going to make, I've just used a white cotton. So I will show you a couple of easy tips to cut out multiple layers. Now, we are using this one, three and a half inch circle. And the fabrics I'm using are this lovely yellow and green printed cotton, a white circle for the back, and this nice yellow, I don't know that you can see it, organza. And what you do is, you cut out, as I say, eight circles of your fabric plus your backing and nine circles of your organza. The easy way to do it is, how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five. So I need four more. The easy what's way I found to do it is to cut a strip and fold it to the size of your uh, circle. And then you've got two circles there. So you want to go three and four. And then you just um, you can cut through all the layers at once. So I will just put the, that to the front so that I can hold it, hold it. And again, they don't have to be perfect because they are just gonna, sh they, uh, and the, the other nice thing about the boil is it doesn't fray either. You just have to cut through all the layers and it's all getting a little bit, there we go. That to one side. Just double check I've got the right number. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I've lost them. Let me try to count that again. One, two, this happened last time. Three, four, five, six, seven. I haven't got enough. I need to cut another two. Luckily, I've got some left. See, I need to learn to count. That's what I need to learn. Let's cut another two. Maybe they've unfolded themselves while it's... Right. So, you start with your backing circle. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one circle of each fabric, sandwich them together like that, one on top of the other. And then right side up, you're going to fold it in half and then fold it into quarters. So you get that lovely cone effect. Now, with your thread, Again, I've doubled my thread. I always like to double it because you want it to be quite secure, not the end. Come up through the middle of your backing square. Every, all your sewing is going to be in the middle. And go back through. And anchor it again like I did before. There we go. Now, I did draw around this with pink. So I'm going to have that on the inside so it, it's hidden. So I'm going to come back up. Right. Now, you take your, your quartered circle and by the point, you stitch it 
through to your backing and just go through it again. And you just keep doing that all the way around. So that's number one. This fabric, this um, flowered fabric was a sheet and it's actually pretty good in that. It's really, the back and the front are very similar. Um, so your wrong side and right side, it does make it a little bit difficult to distinguish, but then again, it doesn't really matter. So you keep going all the way around the circle. You want four quarters, obviously. I'm putting the voil um, circle on the top. Just make sure you line up your quarters. I'm putting them on the top on this layer. Oops. But on the next layer, I'm going to put them on the bottom so you just get a little bit of contrast to your design. And it's just simple, two simple little stitches through. You don't have to make it, you know. On the final quarter for this round. That in there. Down to one little stitch. You can see it's already starting to puff up a bit, which is quite nice. So that's your first layer, and then you just repeat that with the second layer. So chat among yourselves. What sometimes is a nice idea is to slightly offset them. So can you see here where that's the join? Rather than putting them exactly on top, just offset it so that that quarter is then covering your join. And that will allow them to fluff up a little bit more. This is going to be quite nice. I think these colours are quite summery. This yellow and green and white are very, very summery. So this would, would be lovely on a a summer jacket or a, a dress. Nice um, for a wedding as well, if you uh, don't want to have real flowers. Um, never thought about that, because we've got a wedding coming up next year. So I am thinking about wedding things at the moment. So again, place it over the join. My son's getting married next year, so wedding crafts are very much on my mind at the moment. even though I've no idea, I um, even looked for an outfit or anything. But I, don't, I know I don't want a hat, so one of these might be quite nice in my hair. Or as part of a fascinator. So you can see it's really puffing up now. It's still together. <coughs> The vial is very subtle in this. It just adds a, a shimmer. Um, not, it's not sort of really in your face. Um, I have done them before using like um, a, a, a bigger, like a proper net. This isn't vial, is it? I keep saying vial. It's not. It's actually organza. Um, and I've used a net, and that's quite effective as well. In fact, the one the one with the net is actually on the tree behind me. Um, I'll show you it later. Right. The final one goes in the middle, although I'm not sure I actually need it in this one. This one has actually turned out better than the red one. It's, I think it's because the organs are stiffer. So your final one goes right in the middle. Now, you, you don't need to put anything in the middle of these, but you could put a bead. And if you, or if you wanted to simulate sort of flower stamens, a bead on a, on a wire, so it sticks up like, like the stamen of the flower. So that is your last one going in. It's getting a bit difficult to get the needle through it all, but there we go. I'm really pleased with that. I love that. And you sort of separate them out a little bit. And fluff them up. 
And the final thing again you would do is put your brooch back on. Again, I'm not going to make you sit through me sewing that. But there we go. Isn't that pretty? I really like that one. Now, we've got a few more minutes, so I think I will show you the felt one, but I won't do all the embroidery on it because that will take too long. Let's put that one to one side. Let's cut that. Felt's really good for these sort of things because it doesn't fray. But as I say, if you had a fabric that frayed, you could um, um, use interfacing on it. So this one, uh, this felt is actually some I bought and wasn't happy with. I bought it from, from Amazon and it's more like a paper. It's not really very good quality felt, but it's ideal for these. So the two circles I've already cut out, which are the same. Same size as the ones you used for your, your three and a half centimeter one. And what you what I did was padded it out a little bit, this one. So it's got a little bit of toy stuff in it as a base. Now you, you don't need to use a brooch back on this one. This really really makes a nice key ring because if you'd cut two of these flowers out and put one on the other side, it's double-sided then. Um and it just makes a nice key ring. Slightly different stitch in that um you need to blanket stitch around the edge. And we're using embroidery thread. This is embroidery floss using the whole strand because you want it to be quite chunky and forecarty. So between the two circles, bring it, bring it through, then you can hide the end. Now blanket stitch is, I don't know whether you saw what I did then, you make a loop and then you put a stitch up and through the loop like that. So it pulls it. And then you just keep doing that. So there's your thread going round. You're coming up and through. And can you see it makes that nice blanket edge. I use blanket stitch because it's a simple stitch and it's, it looks nice. And it, it's easy to do. It's, it's not a difficult embroidery stitch. So what we're going to be doing here is just simple blanket stitch and possibly some back stitch which I'll show you later. So you keep going round and round. See, I've already made a mistake because what I should have done first was throw the other flower on. So I'm going to stop it now, going around the edge and let you see the flower because we attach the flower with the embroidery. So I've, I've tried to use coordinating colours. So if you put your flower on, uh, like that, and I'm going to use this lime green to do stitch the flower on. I'm going to show you some back stitch now. So again, put a knot in it. Come up from the middle between the two layers um, and into the centre of your flower. And then your, your knot's hidden in the middle. Now you're only going to sew through the top layer and the flower. And a back stitch is you go down and up like that. And it's, again, you need a really sharp pointed needle for this. And then you go back on yourself and you go back down the hole at the top of your previous stitch there. Can you see? Oops. So you're going back down in, in that hole. Again, not through both layers, of, through the flower and the circle, but not through. Can you see it joins up? And then you come back up slightly ahead of your other stitch to the length you want your stitches to be, and back down again. And the way I've done it with these is that when I, I go nearly to the top of the flower, so one more small back stitch, and then I'll put like a Y shape at the top of the petal. So I'm going to go back down. I don't know whether you can see. And then at the top, I'm going to split that stitch. Like that. And do a Y shape at the top. And I'm going to do, you do that around every petal going out to the centre and then you can sew on your button. Now, uh, 
again, I've got, oops, one of these lovely wooden buttons with, which have tra got transfer printed onto them. That would so in the center. So then you would blanket, carry on with your blanket stitch around the edge. And then before you get, when you've got a gap of about that much, you can stuff uh, with your tie stuffing. So then you end up looking like this. Um, as I said, this one's with the tweed that I have. And I've used contrasting threads and a matching button. And that's it. I'm just going to tip you back up again now without knocking you down. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. There was a lot of me talking and a lot of me sewing, but I hope you've got an idea of, of what you can do with your fabulous fabric flowers. And I'm just going to pop this one on because I think it matches my dress. What do you think? Oops, can't see with my glasses. I'm too close. But anyway, there we go. I think that's lovely. So I might wear that all day today. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm just going to shift slightly to one side. Oops, this way. So you can see, this is my Easter tree from ages ago. Um, if you watch that demo, I had Easter eggs hanging on it. But I couldn't find anywhere to put it where it would be safe. So it's now got all of my fabric flowers on it and some beautiful crocheted ones and some with beads. And I think it looks lovely. And in fact, some of these that I made today might go on the tree as well. It's going to have flowers on it all summer. <laughs> Well, that's me done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'd love you to comment and tell me uh, whether you've enjoyed it or not. You can take a look at my Facebook page. You'll find lots and lots of other ideas there. Um, I did a little uh, session this weekend on um, making things with teacups. Uh, so there's a couple of videos on there for that. Um, next weekend, I'm going to do this with a, a live demo um, session with their fabric flowers. Um, I do try and video things and leave little videos on there. There's all sort of how-tos and everything. Um, so that would be great if you could take a look and like my page and then you'll get updates regularly. Um, I also belong to a group called Filed Course Crafters. So if you search on Facebook at Filed Course Crafters, there are lots and lots of my uh, fabulous crafty friends on there doing some wonderful things. So that's always nice to take a look at that. Um, I'm sure I'll be popping up on the virtual village hall again. I do enjoy doing them. Um, it'd be great if you, if you're watching this back, just if you comment, replay, and tell me what you think. Um, any, any, any tips and hints are always welcome. So I'm just going to say goodbye to you now. I've talked myself out, got dry throat. It's nearly lunchtime. Enjoy your lunch. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you've got sunshine, enjoy the sunshine. Tennis starts this afternoon, but I think it's going to rain, so might watch it, might not. So thank you for watching, and this is Kate saying goodbye.